I have six of the best spikes on the market here in my hands. We'll measure the data and tell you which one is the best for you. This is Ultimate Spikes. Alright guys, and we're back from the track. We have gathered all the data. I'm going to introduce you to the spikes and then I'll take you through specs, features and all of the data we collected to show a bit how they compare and so that you can also purchase the one that works best for you. First on the far right we have the Cloud Spike 10,000, a shoe that releases only in a few weeks on July 6. This shoe was given to us by On. Then we have the Saucony Terminal VT, um, a shoe sent to us uh, by Running Warehouse. Adidas Avanti TYO, a shoe sent to us by Top for Running. Then we have the New Balance LDX, Top for Running as well provided this shoe. Then we have the Dragonfly Cross Country. We took the cross country edition, assuming they're very similar with the regular edition. But keep in mind, this is the cross country edition. That's why it, it looks a bit different. And there are some, some differences in terms of specs. Uh, we're not going to go into that in this video, but we'll assume that the two perform the same and that the data measured for this shoe would have been the same for the regular Dragonfly. Sent by Top 4 Running. And last but not least, we have the Spikeless. Um, ASICS Metaspeed LD, a shoe sent to us by Running Warehouse. You have the links to our two long-term partners, Running Warehouse and Top for Running in the description. As always, you know, this um, doesn't cost you much to use them and we get a small kickback, which really helps us to put together the content that you're watching on this channel. First, let's look at the specs and features. We'll look at the weight, the price and the foam technology in all of these shoes. We have um, here for the Cloud uh, Spike 10,000, we have 171.8 grams and a price of $150, 160 euros. This is Piba foam here on the shoe uh, and you have that plastic plate uh, in the forefoot. On the Saucony Terminal VT, we're looking at $150, 180 euros. And this is the light shoe coming at 127 grams in my size US 11. Foam here is Powerrun HG, the same as on the Saucony Endorphin Elite that we reviewed earlier this year. And you also have that plastic plate going all around uh, the shoe, as you can see right here. Next on the Adidas Avanti TYO, we're looking at 179.1 grams and a price of 150 dollars and 180 euros as well. All of the shoes have a big difference between the dollar price and the euro price, uh, quite interesting and always in the same direction. So dollar uh, price is always cheaper on the shoes uh, you have here compared to euro price. We're looking at Light Strike Pro, a blend of Piba as, um, as a foam here. And as you can see right here, you also have some rods on the on this shoe. Next we have the New Balance LDX and this shoe comes at 169.9 grams in my size US 11 EU 45. The spikes on this shoe are not removable so you cannot measure the, the weight with or without the spikes and that's also why all across these this shoes we measure the weight with the spikes attached to shoe and for the Dragonfly, we'll come to it in a second, we put the regular spikes and not the cross-country spikes on it. $160 and 220 euros for this shoe. Um, this is one of the, the pricey ones here. The foam is fuel cell nitrogen infused TPU and you have a carbon plate in the forefoot. Then we have the Nike Dragonfly Cross Country Edition. This shoe comes at 208 grams in my size US 11 EU 45. This is the heaviest of all of the shoes that we have here. And you have Zumex for the midsole, a PBAX plate that you don't see here that allows for that snappiness in the forefoot and a plastic outsole, which is the difference also with the regular Dragonfly. This shoe comes at $150, 175 euros. Again, euro price is um, more expensive. And last but not least, we have the ASICS Metaspeed LD. This shoe comes at 166.4 grams in my size. It's $250, 250 euros. This is the priciest option across the board here on the table. And this is probably also due to that technology that you have um, here, the, the spikeless option. Making spikes out of carbon fiber is very tricky and uh, you know the research and development certainly had a high cost and this is uh, what we have um, as an end price on the, on the price tag of this shoe. Midsole is Flying Firm Turbo, it's Piba um, and now we can move on to the fit of all of these shoes. I tried all of the shoes without socks um, because I thought this was the best way to compare them and many people are still running without socks nowadays on the track. The Cloud Spike was the, uh, the best surprise. It's very, very comfortable. It has just the right amount of padding without, of course, being too much, and it's not very heavy. 
it's really, really a good surprise. It's true to size and I could race in it. I will actually race in it without socks. Um, so definitely very good fit here. We move directly from a good fit to a very bad fit. The fit on the Saucony Terminal VT wasn't good. It was the worst fit of all of the shoes here, mostly due to um, the uh, lacing system that, you know, those small bands here going inside of the shoe and my toes would kind of scratch with them. Um, they would also be noticed when running. Not a good, not a good fit. The, the material of the upper is good and I could see this material being like very, you know, interesting if the, if the fit was better but this was definitely not a pleasant experience in terms of fit. Avanti TYO, these could almost be sleepers. Um, they, they're really comfortable. They run a bit long and I would go half size down on them. And the other issue I had is that the insole in the forefoot was ungluing itself and um, I could feel it being moved away by my toes when kind of like, you know, uh, recruiting them and using them to push I could feel the insole moving underneath my, my feet and that wasn't very pleasant, but the fit experience is good. Again, I would go half size down on this one. Contrary to the Adidas, I would go half a size up on the New Balance or if you like something very snug and you don't mind having your toes almost touching the um, tip of the shoe at all times, not just when running, but you know even standing, you could go through the size. I would go half up. Other than that, the material is a bit stretchy uh, and you can, it fits like a glove. It's probably the, the best fit of all, provided that you go maybe half up if you wanna have just a bit of room in the, in the forefoot after your, your toes um, to avoid that bumping thing uh, in, the, in the forefoot. Dragonfly, I remembered a better fit. It's not a bad fit. It's probably also the widest fit in the toe box, surprisingly, but it, it wasn't perfect, mostly because of the tongue kind of moving around. I like the laces here though, and I would use those laces on other shoes uh, here because not all, all the laces are, are good here. The laces of the Dragonfly are really good. It's the same laces that you would find um, on the Alpha Fly or on the Vaporfly. Those like slightly abrasive laces that really work together once laced and that um, hold in place quite, quite well. ASICS Metaspeed LD. It was at first a very good impression in terms of fit when I put my, my uh, foot in the shoe. Fits like a glove, it's quite padded. You have a nice um, leather padding in the, in the heel and overall the fit is very nicely dialed in, but I could experience some heel slippage in the, in the heel of this shoe. Maybe also due to the, the sweat I had on my legs, on my feet and with the leather heel, I had some movement, I had some heel slip edge heel movement. I was a bit disappointed. I would like to try this shoe maybe with very thin socks. Otherwise, the fit was very nice. The pain in this video is brought to you by Soar and the Soar Milos Club. As you can see, I'm working hard and the singlet is breathing. The sweat is not accumulating. I really love Soar singlet. The Soar Milos Club, among other perks like discounts and early access gives you access to those limited edition Soul Miles singlets, like the one I have here for this season. Link in the description, go subscribe, and let's be together members of the Soul Miles Club. Thank you, Soar. And now let's look at the data. All of the shoes were tested at the same pace, three minutes per kilometer pace for 400 meter reps. This is my 400 meter rep type of pace, slightly faster, but nothing too exaggerated for me. I am not racing at those paces because I'm not a, you know, 800, 1500, 3000 meters uh, racer. So I am only doing these paces for intervals, but I know many of you out there are racing at those paces. And I think it makes sense to test spikes at faster paces. This is why I picked three minutes per kilometer. First, let's look at steps per minute. And I had a lower cadence on the cloud spike, 185 steps per minute. I had the highest cadence on the Metaspeed 192, so slightly faster turnover in the, in the Metaspeed here. Let's look at responsiveness, and for that we use ground contact time as a proxy metric. I had the lowest ground contact time in the New Balance LDX, which would assume that this is the most responsive shoe, and it really feels very responsive. The highest ground contact time was in the um, Cloud Spike and Avanti, very close, 190 milliseconds, 194 milliseconds. So slightly less responsive for these two shoes. 
and especially the Aventi feels indeed less responsive. So that makes sense. Then we have bounciness, and this is essentially how bouncy the foam is in the forefoot. For that, we use a proxy metric, which is the time between max pronation and toe off. So basically between the moment you have the maximal pronation to toe off, the smaller the time, the bouncier the shoe. And here again, the New Balance LDX has the smallest value, 137 milliseconds. So this is not only the most responsive shoe, but also the, the bounciest shoe. And it again makes sense that fuel cell foam has the best compression among all of the spikes. And you can really feel how it decompresses and how it releases the energy. And the carbon plate in the forefoot is very, very snappy and gives you that propulsion. This is super responsive and bouncy, it makes sense. The least responsive spikes on the other side of the spectrum were the Dragonfly and the Avanti at 146 milliseconds. The numbers are very close and of course, you know, all of these shoes are very responsive and they run quite similar, if I'm being honest. But there are some differences in the numbers and I think it's interesting to look a bit closer. Dragonfly, Avanti, a bit less bouncy and again, for the Avanti that makes sense. For the Dragonfly, I wouldn't call it a non-bouncy ride but it definitely takes some time to release the energy and it feels like a spike that would really be used more for longer distances. Next, we move on to power and power is the metric that we're looking at to understand how much energy I had to produce to move at a certain speed and at the same speed because all of these two shoes again were tested at the same pace. The most efficient ride was in the on cloud spike 10,000, 320 watts for that three minutes per kilometer. And that was a big difference with the other shoes. So 320 watts here for the least efficient shoes, we were looking at, um, especially for the Avanti, 351 watts, so 31 watts difference. And again, you know, over a 5K race on the track, 30 watts per minute, 15, 16, 17 minutes, you have a big difference in energy spending. So Avanti TYO was the, the least, least efficient spike. For the other shoes we had, for the Terminal VT, 340 watts, 341 for the LDX, 328 for the Dragonfly, which was second after the, um, after the Cloud Spike, and then Metaspeed, 332. So the three most efficient spikes were the um, Cloud spike, Dragonfly, and Metaspeed. Foot strike, and this is a measurement of where I was striking with my foot when I was landing with these shoes. Zero corresponds to the heel, 15 to the forefoot, and the numbers in between are just the point at which I was striking. And this is to give you an idea of how these shoes work for the same runner at the same pace. You can see differences in the place where uh, I was striking. We had 7.7 .7 for the Cloud spike, 8.5 for the Terminal VT, so this is the shoe with which I was striking the most towards the forefoot. Then we had 7 for the Avanti TYO, 7.4 for the LDX, 7.4 for the Dragonfly, and 7.5 for the Metaspeed LD. Very similar number, except for the Terminal VT, which had me more on my, on my toes and a bit less in between uh, heel and, and forefoot. It's a more traditional ride, and we'll come back to that in a second, but the numbers make sense here. Next, we have pronation and pronation is that angle that we measure for um, the movement you have with your feet compared to a uh, you know, straight axis, you have an angle at which you pronate and we take that measurement, the maximum pronation, this is what, what you have here. For the cloud spike, we were looking at 23 degrees of pronation, then we had 30 degrees on the Terminal VT, 24.8 on the Avanti TYO, 22.5 on the LDX, 22.8 on the Dragonfly and 23 on the Metaspeed LD. The, these two shoes were the ones, um, let's say the most stable ones, although the numbers are quite high in terms of pronation. So you have some pronation going on here and that makes sense also at faster paces. And I will repeat it, pronation is not a bad thing. It's just a protection mechanism developed by your body to protect your lower legs. And these two shoes just prevent to have too much pronation. The Terminal VT had the highest, uh, you know, pronation degree in it. And um, again, I would say I could feel it. And the, the worst fit, the bad fit was maybe also due, um, causing a bit of that because you, you had the pronation with the shoe, but also a bit of pronation inside the shoe because of the fit not being super dialed in in this shoe. And last we have pronation velocity. You can pronate at a certain angle, 50 degrees, but you can go very slow to the 50 degrees or you can go very fast. And pronation velocity is looked at as a risk injury factor, even more than pronation. So, you know, technically a bigger pronation angle doesn't mean a higher injury risk. 
however a fast supination velocity, so how fast you collapse um, in one or the other direction, may be correlated according to studies to um, a higher injury risk. 1250 degrees per second on the cloud spike, 1534 on the terminal VT, 1210 on the Avanti TYO, 1541 on the LDX, 1492 on the Dragonfly and 1545 on the Metaspeed LD. Essentially these two shoes, the cloud spike and the Avanti TYO had the lower numbers for pronation velocity, meaning that they are the less correlated with injury risk, whereas the four other shoes were very close in that 1500 ballpark and they may cause, you know, they may have a higher risk of injury if you look at that pronation velocity. Overall, if we look at pronation and pronation velocity, Cloud Spike is doing a very good job. Avanti TYO is not doing a bad job. The rest of the shoes, especially Saucony Terminal VT, is correlated, for me at least, for my running, my gait cycle, with a higher injury risk, and that's because I'm pronating quite a lot and with a high uh, pronation uh, velocity. So yeah, it's just, you know, my numbers and uh, they may be correlated or not uh, with injury risk for you, depending on how you run. And I would encourage you to uh, try one of these spikes, maybe based on this video and try to feel whether they work for you or not. Next, let's move to the one word section. And this is the section in which I used to use only one word per shoe to describe it. Now I use a bit more, but the idea is to condense as much as I can the information, not the objective information from the data, but the subjective information from my testing. Uh, let's start with the cloud spike and I would I would just call it a very competitive shoe. I had it in mind as a dark horse, as you know, an outsider. It's not a dark horse, it's really one of the best spikes you can find on the market right now. It surprised me, it's very aggressive in the forefoot, you can see that toe spring here and that rocker is really really pronounced. It's very stiff in the forefoot and it really pushes you to your next stride very fast. It's making you run fast for sure. And I would also like to highlight how good the foam feels on the foot. You can feel you have lots of it. It's almost cushioned, which is not the case with all of the spikes here on the table. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the Saucony Terminal VT because as you may have understood, I'm not a huge fan of it. It feels harsh, it feels firm. It's a ride that I just didn't enjoy at all. All of these shoes have, you know, next generation type of foams. This also is the case here on the shoe Power Run HG is a you know, new generation foam, but I just couldn't feel it. It felt flat, it felt hard, it felt firm. If you're looking for a spike that has new technologies in it, that looks quite good, but you wanna have that old school feeling of a traditional spike, this may be what you're looking for. I'm just not gonna use it anymore because I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. Avanti TYO is a shoe that feels very different in terms of ride compared to the others. Like I said, the fit was a bit long and I would recommend you to go half size down or at least to do a runner's knot on your, on your shoe here. It feels way less aggressive compared to the other shoes. It's also quite you know, flexible here in the forefoot. It's very pleasant to run in, but it doesn't feel as competitive as the other shoes. It's almost like a training spike, which will not go too hard on your calves. You can use it once a week, it's gonna be fine. Twice a week, it's gonna be fine. It's a nice shoe, it's an affordable shoe as well because you can find easily some discounts on it. I just wouldn't call it a competitive shoe for um, you know shorter distances or for faster runners over 5K, 10K compared to the others. New Balance LDX, this was probably my nicest surprise on this table with the Cloud Spike and to a certain extent with the Metaspeed. This one is really super, super aggressive. You can feel that it's you know, probably the most aggressive of all. The interesting thing is that it only has four spikes built in, you cannot remove them. I almost would like to have two extra spikes here in the forefoot to make it even more like grippy and to increase the traction. The fuel cell foam is just superb on this shoe. You can feel the cushion, you can feel how much it decompresses. And it's almost, I would say, the most interesting way of using fuel cell to my, uh, to my knowledge, to my, you know, with all the testing I did. Fuel cell is an interesting foam for sure, but on many shoes, it feels a bit too mushy and it doesn't feel as responsive as here. Here it's the nicest way of using fuel cell I have experienced. And that's also probably not just fuel cell, but that very, very stiff plate in the forefoot. As you can see, I cannot bend the shoe at all. The fit was very good, although I would again recommend to go half a size up. This is a very good surprise. The 
the price in Euro 220 is a bit nuts and it's maybe competitive if you live in the US. In Europe, I'm not sure it is. Dragonfly, you cannot be wrong using a Dragonfly and this was proven again in this test. It's not the most exciting shoe out of the six here. It's not the most aggressive shoe out of the six here, but it's certainly the one that will deliver no matter who you are and no matter how you run. You can feel the Zoomex foam. It's um, very pleasant underfoot. It's very, you know, soft almost. And you can feel that this is a spine that saves your leg a bit more compared to the others. Maybe with a caveat for the, for the LDX because the, the foam also saves your legs quite nicely here, but it's very aggressive. Same for the Cloud Spike, very nice saving uh, effect with the foam on this shoe, but it's very aggressive. The Dragonfly feels a bit less aggressive. It feels a bit more snappy. And as you can see, the forefoot bends quite well. It's a shoe that definitely would be my choice for longer distances or cross country. I wouldn't probably race in it for 1500, 3000 and 5K, maybe 10K, but let's come back to that in a sec. Last but not least, you may ask how spikeless um, shoes, spikeless spikes uh, work and they work well. I couldn't tell the difference with uh, the other shoes on the table. That plate with the carbon spikes integrated in it worked really, really well. It delivered um, a very good performance. My only complaint in the shoe was the heel cup made of, out of leather. As soon as you have some sweat on your feet, you can feel the movement here, you can feel the slippage, and it wasn't very pleasant. You forget about it after a few hundred meters, but it's definitely noticeable, and I would try to use this, this spikes um, with socks. It's probably a very leg-saving one, it's probably a very uh, attractive one for racing, but the price point is really bad, 250 euros to 50 dollars, is not what I would call good value for money, especially looking at the other shoes on the table. Cloud Spike is much, much, much better value for money. I would love to see this shoe coming down to 180 euros, 180 dollars, and then I could consider it for racing. And last part of the video, how would I use these shoes? For some of them, I just wouldn't use them, and that's the Terminal VT out of the competition here. I just wouldn't use it. I probably also wouldn't use the Metaspeed at this price point. I'm gonna keep it on the table because I would like to explain how I may use it. I'm very lucky that this shoe was provided to us by a running warehouse, but I, I wouldn't buy it at this price point. Cloud Boom and to a certain extent LDX, I would race in them. This is more like 1500, 3000. This is more 5K, 10K. I would try the Dragonfly cross country for cross country because of the new spikes that come with it and that would allow for better traction, better grip, and also, you know, not having the mud sticking to your outsole. So I would try this for cross country. Avanti, I, to a certain extent, will not use again. It's a good product. It's a very comfortable product. I just, when I put spikes on, I wanna, you know, go hard and hit some fast intervals. This shoe doesn't feel like it's very aggressive and it doesn't make me want to go super hard, so I'm just not going to use it. And Metaspeed, I would love to, you know, use a bit the same as the Cloud Spike 10,000, to be honest, 5K, 10K. The issue with the heel would need to be fixed or I would need to try it with socks and that would probably uh, help. The price point, again, is not something I would pay for it and that's the reason why I'm not really putting it up there uh, with these two that are my, you know, top picks here on the table. This is it guys, this was Ultimate Spikes 2023. We won't have another one of these videos this year. This is the only one with the best spikes of the year. We'll probably have one next year with the Olympics releases. We'll have tons of product updates also in the spikes category and we'll certainly do that type of video again. Let's link to Ultimate Shoes, that's 2023. We have the Rocket X2, the Vaporfly 3, the Endorphin Elite and many other shoes in that video with data and subjective feelings as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one.